I'd like to welcome everyone to the Tuesday, January 11th school board meeting. Could we all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag. I'd like to welcome everyone to tonight's meeting and a special welcome to our interim superintendent, Dr. Ken Murphy, who will be with us for the next six months while we conduct our search for our permanent superintendent. Um, Dr. Murphy comes to us after 18 years with the Yarma School District, and we feel quite fortunate to um, have the opportunity to work with him for the next six months. So thank you, Ken, for being with us. Well, thank you, and thank each of you for making me feel so comfortable with this transition, um, and thank members of the district leadership team for also making me feel so comfortable with this transition. And I'd be remiss if I didn't thank uh, Alan Hawkins for all he's done uh, to make this transition as smooth as possible. As you might imagine, Alan has left everything in tip-top shape, so um, I'm very, very appreciative of that. So, and thanks for the softball agenda tonight. Um, <laughs> we have a very short agenda. I don't think I can mess that up, uh, so let's see. Okay, um, let's go over any adjustments to the agenda. I know there are a couple. Right, we've got, uh, I know we have an adjustment for coach, that's, that's new, and we also have an adjustment to the motion for the varsity baseball team. Uh, you know, not only have to approve it because of, I mean, act on approving it because it's an out-of-state trip, but you also have a fundraising policy, as I understand, for any amount over $20,000. That also needs school committee approval. So. There's a slight adjustment of that. So um, I think what we'll do then is approve the fundraising first and then um, look at the trip, if that makes sense. OK. Um, and then I'd like to add an item E to new business, please. Um, so 6E, approval of the credentials review committee for the superintendent search. So um, the next thing we have, moving on to item two, is approval of school board minutes for our meeting on Tuesday, December 14th. Do I have a motion? David? I, I move uh, the approval of the school board minutes for uh, a last board meeting at last school board meeting is set forth in the attached to our agenda. Okay. Do I have a second? A second. Eight. Okay. Um, all those in favor or discussion? Is there any discussion around this? Anyone have any comments? Okay. Um, all those in favor? Seven zero. Okay, thank you. Next, we'll move on to comments by student representatives. Uh, do we have student representatives from the middle school? Great, welcome. Hi, I'm Gabby Raymond. And I'm Sarah O'Connor. The Cape Elizabeth Middle School is having a spelling bee on January 12th at 2.45. Anyone's welcome to join. Um, the Environmental Club is having a dance for 7th and 8th graders on Friday the 14th from 7 to 9 p.m. And it's $5 to get in, but the um, home room that brings in the most plastic cups, they are trying to um, reduce the amount of bottles they're using. So they're trying to get plastic cups brought in, and so the home room that brings in the most gets in free to the dance. The Variety Show is on January 13th. This is where kids show off their talents like dancing, singing, acting, and other things. The showings are at 2.30 and 6.30. Um, on January 25th, um, 89 randomly selected 8th graders will be taking the NAPE tests 
Um, and they cover language arts, science, and math. On January 26th, the 8th graders will be taking their world language test. This is to ensure that they will be in the right world language classes in high school. Um, the theme for this month in the middle school is um, leadership and responsibility. In the past month, kids were doing random acts of kindness in 7th and 8th grade, kind, which is when you do random acts of kindness. Some advisories made signs and put them on lockers, and one advisory walked around and watched kids and if they did a random act of kindness, they would write their name down. And one day at lunch, they gave everyone who did a random act of kindness jello. Um, the swimming and track sign-ups start on Monday. Altogether, there are 116 kids signed up for the Nordic, Nordic skiing, girls basketball, and boys basketball. Girls basketball had 50 kids, boys basketball had 36, and Nordic skiing had 30. Um, are there any questions? Any questions, anyone? No. No. Just thank you very much you. for coming and, and uh, your presentation. Any comments from high school? Um, just a little bit because vacation there hasn't been much time since last meeting. But um, let's see, the midterms are coming up in the end of the second quarter. Um, so students are preparing for the midterms, which are coming up next week. Uh, just recently, there was a, a presentation, a play production uh, put on by Harlan Baker, who's a, um, a theater teacher at USM, I believe, and a former state legislator. And it was uh, about the um, mobilization of labor throughout um, the early 1920s to the 1960s. And it was for all juniors in American history to attend. Um, this morning was the beginning of the advocate meetings, which are um, attempts for underclassmen to guide them through the process of high school and make sure that uh, they're keeping their grades up and they're acclimated to the school. And it's uh, run by all the teachers, and the teachers have uh, a certain number of students that they are sort of advising. And uh, I've had a lot of questions uh, about the new superintendent. And uh, so, uh, they, but they only ask one question. It's, uh, they, they want to know your snow day policies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I figured that was Quite it. Relevant. <laughs> you can assure them that I know how to call off school, <laughs> if is going to be the question. <coughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Reed. Appreciate it. All right. So comments from the public on agenda items. Do we have any comments from the public on agenda items? All right. Um, <coughs> communications. Middle schools, this we believe essayists. Um, Steve, will, are you presenting on that? I think, Steve, is, that's for next meeting. February 1st, February 1st. Yeah. Oh. Right. Okay. Sorry, I did not know that. So they're moved to the February 8th meeting? Yes. Is that right? Okay. Great, I'll look forward to that. All right, so new business, on to new business. Um, consideration to approve Kate Elizabeth's past part one budget costs for the 2011 and 2012 years in the amount of $45,135.44. I am going to pass this one to Kathy, who is our past representative on the school board. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to approve Cape Elizabeth's past part one budget costs for 2011-12 in the amount of $45,135.44. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, discussion. Kathy? Can I just add, um, for those um, who are maybe new to this, um, in your packets you will see that there is a um, um, a draft of information for um, all of the schools that belong to PATH, PATH being the Portland Arts and Technical High School. Um, I'm not sure the number we have this year, but they based the budget on prior two years. We had um, nine students in 2008 and seven students in 2009. So our portion of the budget is 1.5% or based on eight students, so that's how the 45, 135, 44 comes up. 
We meet um, monthly, and um, what we did, I wasn't at this particular meeting, but what we do is we approve the budget, we go back, and the individual boards approve their different amounts, and we get back to paths so that they know whether we've approved it or not. So, so our portion is the 45, 135, 44 for the upcoming year. Kathy, any questions? David. Um, Kathy, I think it would be helpful, at least for the public, to explain what PATH is so uh, they understand. I guess I didn't say it loud enough. It's the Portland Arts and Technical High School. And um, they have various programs that we don't carry um, in our high school. Mm -hmm. The latter part, I think, is particularly important. Right. Yeah, each, each school system in the state is required to offer vocational education, and usually it's delivered through a regional school. Um, and there are 16 different schools that feed into PATHS, and it's uh, a tremendous uh, programs that they offer. And I know it's difficult to get students often to attend schools like, like this, but for 45,000, in my view, it represents a huge bang for the buck. Um, all right. Another so, question? another question. Kathy, do you know um, is the transportation is that it's paid for in that sum? It's not transportation no. is separate. Right. We we Cape Elizabeth um, pays for the transportation to get the students out there. This is the right. dollars that go directly to paths. Great. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. All those in favor? Seven zero. All right. On to item B: consideration to approve High School World Affairs Council trip to Boston University at the Model UN conference, um, February fourth through sixth. Is there someone here, Jeff? So this is the second of three planned trips, I think it is, during the year, um, that Gretchen McNulty, who's the advisor of the World Affairs Council, would be bringing to the board. You've already approved one. The students have gone. Uh, they did fabulously well, by the way. Um, and, and so this is a trip from February 4th to 6th, which is a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Students would be missing, as they do with each of the World Affairs Council trips, one day. Um, Gretchen McNulty, the advisor, tends to look for trips that minimize any disruption to school. Um, the cost to students is approximately $200, and students would be chaperoned by Ms. McNulty and her husband, who are very experienced chaperones um, in situations like this. They could not be in better hands. So if there are any questions, I'd be glad to answer any questions for folks have. Any questions? Okay. May I have a motion, please? Kathy? I move we approve the High School World Affairs Council trip to Boston University Model UN Nations for February 4th through the 6th, 2011. Do I have a second? Second. Yep. Okay. okay. All the, uh, any more discussion, actually? All those in favor? 7-0. Okay, now we're on to um, our amended agenda. Um, consideration to approve fundraising for the varsity bas or baseball trip to Orlando, Florida, April 15th through 22nd. And um, my apologies for not bringing this up to you before, um, before tonight. I, I think this might be a non-issue. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm Bob Danielson. I'm representing the Cape Baseball Boosters, and you may all know Coach Hayward. Um, the 20 students, uh, athletes from the baseball team, are going to try to go to Florida in the springtime. And <clears throat> rather than have the boosters raise the funds, each individual student is responsible for raising their own funds. Um, and most of the families are going to participate. There's one family that is going to be helped by the boosters uh, so that we don't exclude anybody that can't afford to go. Uh, but this is not a fundraising event sponsored by the boosters or otherwise. Um, 
and I'll have to um, look at the policy, but the policy includes any school-related event where funds are, ra are given by families. So um, it does, I think, include even amounts that are, um, so. Yeah, whatever the we policy just, is, just, we're, just, we're, we're not asking students to raise funds. Each family's mm -hmm. contributing what they can, and the students are out working part-time jobs and doing what they can to, to raise funds, but the boosters made it a policy not to to try to raise funds, because we need to raise funds for the entire baseball program. Mm -hmm. okay. We've had uh, a couple of meetings. I'm Chris Hayward, I'm the varsity baseball coach entering my fifth year. We've had a couple of meetings with uh, the families of the, of the students that are hoping to go. And we've bantered around many different fundraising ideas and really came as a consensus of the group that no, we're all set. Um, we'll be able to handle, uh, handle the, incur the cost ourselves. Um, any questions from the board? <clears throat> Not for the gentleman, but I haven't read this policy, and so I'm not sure what they're saying exempts them from the policy. Well, we can um, vote to approve the amount or, um, or not. Uh, but, Kathy, I mean, uh, you're the policy committee chair. Could you speak to this? I don't know exactly what the policy says myself. I don't have it in front of me, so I am not sure I can comment. Um, I've read something to the effect that any any trip that includes over twenty thousand dollars in fundraising needs documentation. So it sounds like, from my perspective, it's a matter of interpretation what fundraising is. Is it a booster group actually raising funds, or is it, or is it the, the trip just the fact that the trip costing that much? May I make a suggestion? May I make a suggestion? Um, not to be the lawyer at splitting legal hairs, but I think it is a question of interpretation. Can we avoid the question of interpretation if they have a specific amount and all we need to do is approve it above the amount, and therefore we're complying with the policy, even if the policy doesn't apply, so we don't have to go back and look at the policy? Do that. Seems reasonable. You could do that. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. We have no objection to to uh, accepting if we're within the policy. We just didn't think we were fundraising. <laughs> if maybe you could tell us what the total amount is, and if it's above our amount, we can then intelligently approve it if that's what we're going to do, and we can move this whole issue. Great. Chris, why don't you? We're do estimating the cost to, per person to be approximately $1,500. Um, when we were approved to go in 2009, we projected the cost to be uh, $1,400. And we came back um, under budget, and we were able to refund uh, families at seventy dollars a piece. Um, the, the students that go, went um, in 2009 decided that they would like a, a similar, but perhaps a, a different experience, and they voted unanimously to let's see if we can get into the Disney complex. So not only are we going to go for uh, seven days of baseball, we're also going to. And be fully immersed in a, in a Disney experience. Uh, my initial projection again was about $1,500. That was with uh, four uh, four athletes per room. Um, some are willing to do that. Some say, "Well, geez, how much more is it if we choose to go three or two to a room?" So that slides the cost up, and we're letting them choose individually. Um, we we're projecting uh, $1,297 if they're going four to a room. Uh, that would include their plane fare, their room, uh, the registration, all the baseball, and a three-day harbor pass. Uh, if they go three to a room, the cost would be, with the, for the same material, would be $1,430 a piece, and two to a room would be $1,540 a piece. So what would be the maximum estimate? Because that way, if we approve the maximum estimate, and you come in lower because people choose different rooms, and we still satisfy the policy. Uh, I would say seven. We have well, including food, to about seventeen hundred. We total that will be so for a total of about thirty-four thousand dollars, which um, comfortably will we'll be able to come in under that. Okay. So, how many athletes are going on a trip? Twenty. And, and how many athletes are on the team? Uh, well, it's part of the whole program. I mean, we, 
the, the students that are going are not necessarily going, going to be the varsity players, but they're uh, athletes who have embodied commitment, community, and character, which is what um, the baseball program stands for since since I've been in in, um, in the head coaching responsibilities. So we we pick the 20 kids that embody that and you know, and, and play a lot of baseball. So there may be. There may be some some kids play virus end up playing varsity that don't go on the trip, and some of the kids that go on the trip will will still play JV. You haven't selected any kids to go on the trip who have said that it would be a hardship to pay fifteen hundred dollars or more to go. Yes, there's one, and the boosters were the families are saying not a problem. We'll 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 spread the cost so that the athlete can go. Okay. Hey, I'm not sure if this socially and emotionally to make that much money for kids during their spring year with schools and exams and APs and um, SATs. That seems like a lot of extra work during sports and their academic. Um, I know kids would want to go to baseball and to students would want to go to baseball and to Disney World with their friends and say four to a room, three to a room. Is our Maybe Jeff could speak of this. Have we talked about is this an emotional, social emotional burden on the kids um, for bringing up that much money, for being responsible for that much money? This is a program that the families agreed to, and the families <clears throat> decided that they could afford the payment per their child. Now, my kid is going to raise some money because he's not going to Disney World on my nickel for free. Uh, but other than that, some of the parents are paying all of it, some of the students are paying all of it. I think it's a tremendous resource and, and learning experience for the kid to, to try to raise some of his own money for the trip. Um, the, what was that social and emotional thing? I, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> um, we've okay. done it in the past and it's worked before. So When we went in 2009, there were three um, athletes who received invitations that decided not to go and that wasn't held against them one bit. Uh, for this trip here as well, there were three athletes who have been invited and uh, opted not to go. And we, again, we don't have any issues with that at all. It's, it's completely voluntary. Uh, we want to make sure that if they say no, it's, it's because yeah, they don't want to play that much baseball or they don't want to use their whole April vacation on baseball. We want to just make sure it's not due to uh, financial reasons and, and we feel comfortable in the decisions from the families. One more question. Yes, ma'am. Um, how many years have you been doing this? This will be the second trip. We, my original goal for when I took over the program was to be able to go every other year. And um, we're right on that course so far. And is there any children, uh, students who want to go but weren't invited? Um, it sounds kind of funny, but I would say I hope so. Because I hope that there's some of the younger kids aspire to, you know, are hoping that they get asked and it's, you know, there has to be a cutoff someplace, so I hope that it's the youngsters that didn't get invited will still play baseball and, and understand that they'll get a chance eventually by going, by going every day. We try to get it so that anybody that shows commitment to the whole program and, and improving themselves will, will get the opportunity. So the seniors who do want to go as their last chance are able to go? Yes. All the seniors this year for the, are returning from kids that went as sophomores. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Okay. May I have a motion, please? David? Uh, I move that we approve the varsity baseball team trip to Orlando, Florida on April 15th through the 22nd for 2011 at, um, with a cost of up to 34000 to be raised by private means through families, uh, et cetera, and to um, approve an exemption to our existing policy to allow that to occur. A one-time um, exemption, excuse I'm me. I'm not sure. When you're talking about an exemption, what exemption are you talking about, David? I'm confused. Um, as I said, I'm, I mean, we, we have to, We'll, I'll, I could change it to waive. We are, if we have a policy limit of 20,000, I'm 
my motion is to approve this um, trip. I'll say it in generic terms. Approve the trip with a cost of up to 34000 In order to do that, we must grant a one-time waiver from our, no? I think so. No. The, the policy is that if the fundraising is over $20,000, then the school board needs to approve the, the fundraising, the, the, okay. to, to approve the fundraising then I'll just, to a level that's over. I will, um, so if it was under $20,000, it would it. not be before us? Okay. I get it. I'll change the word in my motion. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I move uh, that we approve the varsity baseball trip, uh, team trip to Olinda, Florida, on April 15th through the 22nd, 2011, um, with an estimated cost of uh, $34,000. Second. Michael. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. All right. So um, our next item on the agenda is con Thank you. consideration Thank you. to approve. Actually, you should probably. Um, Chris, you might want to stay there because we're going to, uh, the next item in the, in the agenda is consideration to approve your trip. Um, so item C is consideration to approve the varsity baseball team trip to Orlando, Florida, April 15th through 22nd, 2011. And um, you've already given us the specifics of the trip. Um, so um, are there any other questions? About the trip? Okay. May I have a motion, please? I'll try the motion. Okay. Um, I give a motion to approve the trip to the, uh, let's see, where are we? The approve the varsity baseball trip to Orlando, Florida on April 15th to the 22nd on 2011. Okay. Do I have a second? Se second. She raised her hand, so she wins. Oh. <laughs> It could never work okay. for me. Great. All those in, all those in favor? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Have a good trip. Hey. Um, next item is consideration to approve the following extracurricular nominations. Is there someone here to talk about <coughs> um, the Varsity Nordic Ski? Um, Coach and the Nordic Ski Volunteer, do we need to discuss it? You have some background material. I don't know if it's self-explanatory or not, but if not, I'm sure Jeff can answer any questions you have. Um, our first candidate was uh, Devin Morrow, and he was, he's was he been an assistant uh, with the Nordic team uh, for a number of years, and he was hoping to um, start a family. He's fairly young and was uh, looking forward to some time um, to start that, but he had a hard time finding a, a coach to replace him at the uh, varsity level, so he had stepped up and said that he would do it, and uh, in the meantime, we're still in the hunt for um, a varsity Nordic coach, but uh, in the duration, uh, Devin would be filling in that void. So originally, when this was approved, um, maybe in October, it, he was approved as a, an assistant coach, which was booster funded. Um, now we're just asking that, um, the stipend be part of the school, okay. uh, school funded. And then uh, the second candidate was uh, Jason Kendall, who will be a uh, volunteer assistant. All right. All right. Um, any questions? Okay. Um, may I have a motion? May I have, I have a, motion? a question, but I thought that came during the discussion. It, it probably should. I'm still green. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. May I have a motion? Okay. May I have a second? No. I have Wait. to state the motion. Oh, yes. I, I, I move to approve um, Devin Morrill as the varsity Nordic ski coach and Jason Kendall, I assume as the assistant Nordic ski coach in a volunteer capacity. I second. All right, thanks, Keith. All right, discussion. Yeah, one question. Yeah, um, questions. Uh, you look tired for some reason tonight. Uh, <laughs> yes. um, is just to, to make sure when we approved um, the, is the stipend he's going to receive the same as the booster money we, what, what's the stipend? Okay. 
The stipend that he's going to be receiving would be the varsity head coach stipend, which was um, a stipend that was funded by the school. And so that was within the athletic budget. Um, $3,500. Uh, $3, okay. okay, thank you. Um, originally, when this was voted, it had listed him as uh, an ass the varsity assistant, and that was a booster-funded stipend. So we're just switching Thank the you. responsibility of supporting him financially. Any other questions, Kate? Um, 232 hours, is that the driving as well? Two, is 232 hours, I hadn't looked at that line before. Yeah, that would include everything from, that would fall under, the, the driving time would fall under, the, it's a matrix that we use for, okay. for these stipends, and that would fall under planning, which would include things like driving and preparation. And this is consistent every year with the Nordic? Correct. Yeah, that stipend is a, is a set stipend that... Um, Thank you. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Seven zero. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. Um, the next item is an addition to our agenda, and it is item E: approval of credentials review committee for the superintendent search. And Michael will speak briefly to that, please. Uh, sure. <clears throat> I move that the uh, school board establish a credentials review committee for the purpose of assisting the school board in evaluating the credentials of uh, the superintendent candidates. Uh, committee members will include school board members, members of the district leadership team, town council, teachers, and citizens. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Thank you. Um, discussion? I wish we had a recorder. Could, could you repeat the motion? There was a word in there I didn't quite hear. Sure. Uh, I move that the school board establish a credentials review committee for the purpose of assisting the school board in evaluating the credentials of the superintendent candidates. Committee members will include school board members, members of the district leadership team, uh, town council, teachers, and citizens. Second again. Um, any discussion around this item? I'd just like to clarify for the record that uh, the final decision uh, is by the school board and that the credentials committee would be providing uh, a variety of recommendations, advisory comments, and so forth, but it is the school board's decision, and they are not our agents. They're simply assisting us in providing information to the board. Is that correct? Uh, correct. Thank you. And I'm assuming that um, we will be posting information about this, about these um, positions fairly soon, and people can read about them online? Uh, yes. The, for, uh, the openings for citizens will be, uh, uh, will notify using the um, same process that the town used for open um, committees. All those in favor? Okay. All right, so we will move on to committee reports. Um, I know there are a couple of committees that uh, may report in. Would anyone like to start in particular? Kate, would you like to start with teaching and learning? Sure. The teaching and learning committee, um, <coughs> so I was going to do a long spiel. Um, Teaching and Learning Committee will have their follow their January meeting on the 21st. Oh 21st, thank you. Um, and the Technology Department will be uh, who will be presenting. Oh, the committee meeting will be on the 21st, but the workshop will be on the 25th. Thank you. Yes. Committee meetings on the 21st, and the workshop is on the 25th, and it will be publicized. Um, on TV so that anyone can watch it and uh, follow-up questions will be given to teaching and learning and we'll collate them and give them to technology if anyone um, has any further questions. Okay, good. Um, and just to clarify about um, Thank you. 
televising. Uh, there will be, it will be, um, I think it will be not in real time, right. but it will be taped and then um, you can watch it later. It, it will be on the website um, probably a few days after the meeting. So, thank you. Any other comments around that or questions for Kate about teaching and learning? No? Thank you, Kate. David, did you want to report on legislative? Uh, sure. Um, we haven't technically scheduled our first meeting yet. Uh, we have met jointly, uh, town council and school board, with our representatives, uh, both the, from the House and the Senate. Um, generally, the questions were uh, predictably unanswerable. Um, in the sense of what is going on in Augusta, what might happen with the Republican legislature and Republican governor. Um, we, uh, we, we did confirm in, in terms of discuss what the possible budget shortfalls might be, um, loss of stimulus money of about a million to next year, potential budget shortfall figures were discussed in the number of $1.2 billion in the following year. Um, we did discuss in detail um, and came up with a uh, proposal uh, that's being worked on to file legislation in conjunction with um, the representatives of our town in South Portland uh, with perhaps some other towns to, uh, in support of legislation being filed or has been filed by the main school board association to uh, and each, each bill will be slightly different, but generally the point is to open up competition for uh, uh, the um, health insurance for school districts, to allow school districts to um, allow multiple insurers or insuring type entities to bid in some sort of uh, bidding process for um, each school district or com perhaps combination of school districts. The exact format of that is obviously subject to the legislative process, but that's generally the concept that was discussed, which, by the way, is in furtherance of the recommendations of, and I should remember the name of it, and maybe you should remember the name of it, Mary, because you're on it, but the CAPE um, uh, Health Insurance Review Committee. Uh, that was one of the recommendations uh, uh, to, to to file such legislation. Thank you, David. John, do you have um, a report on finance? <clears throat> uh, yes. Um, as a finance committee, we have not yet met um, under this board, but we will meet um, on January 25th. We're still finalizing the agenda, but it should include um, some discussion of the need to replace the boilers in the high school um, and the status of that project, which has been underway for some time. Um, it should also include other potential capital improvement needs um, and an outline of the budget process schedule for this winter and into the spring. Thank you. Um, Kathy, anything on policy? Um, you know, we finally came up with a policy date of January 26th at 8.30 a.m. Um, and I will get an email out to the policy committee members and human resources. Maybe this, up, maybe this evening I can get that wrapped up in terms of a meeting. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, public. One quick, one uh, quick question, Mary. I, I, I may have written, written, I have, may have scribbled the date's wrong, but did you say the 25th for the finance committee, January? That's right. It's the same night of the workshop. Okay, that's my question. Yes. The finance committee typically meets for an hour in advance of the workshop. And the workshop is not the teaching and learning committee? Teaching? Uh, yes. I mean, we have the fine. you know how we have the finance committee okay. first? Okay. Now I understand. And then for an hour, and then we have the For workshop. new members of the board, um, this is the way we've been doing it. Uh, I'm, I'm biting my tongue and it hurts. Okay. okay. Oh. Sure it does. Uh, um, public comment on non-agenda items. Any public comment? I don't see any members of the public. Um, 
School board agenda requests. Are there <coughs> any agenda requests for the next meeting, <coughs> February 8th? <coughs> no? Okay. Um, announcements of upcoming meetings. I think we've announced everything that's coming up at this point. There is a wellness meeting coming up that's on the website. It's a uh, wellness is meeting every other month, one in the afternoon and in the morning. And the good news about wellness, the wellness committee, is that we've just received a grant that the uh, three wellness committee members, Paul Harris, uh, Lane Bouchard, and um, Gretchen, Mc, uh, I always, not McNulty, McCloy, McCloy thank you, no. um, will report on. Uh, pretty soon. It's exciting though for wellness. Good. Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. And we are through our agenda. And it is, um, is it looks like it's 743. Is this a record? I think this might be a record. I know. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all for that. <laughs> Definitely a record since you've been on the board. <laughs> <laughs> Now, why is everybody laughing at that? And May I have a motion to no adjourn? May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All right. <laughs> Wicked cheap shot, Mary. What about the legislative liaison? Are we going to set up a